evening, reptile entrepreneurs and niche content creators. Eddie, hello. Hey, what's going on, you guys? Hey, hey, nice to have me. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you. Oh, I love it. Love it. Love it talking to you because you keep doing stuff. And so it's always fun to see where you are. Oh, my gosh. Look at this. <laughs> we have Sean McNeely, McZoo. Oh. Hey, what's going on, Eddie? Traveling across the country. So he's actually, where, in Utah now? Oh, so he's shit. In some hotel somewhere <laughs> hanging out with us. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So, uh, well, everybody, the first thing, you know, usually I start these things off with a little bit of news. And uh, Meta, that owns Facebook and Instagram, has this new thing called Meta Verified. Uh, have you heard of this, Eddie? Yeah, I have. I've heard, heard the Meta Verified, the little check and everything like that. It's just cool. It's a cool concept. I've been trying to get checked more for a couple of years now, and now i got to pay for it. So I don't know how I feel about it too much, you know? <laughs> well, so this, this used to be something you get like for... Uh, Sorry, <laughs> you know, I <laughs> something you get on Twitter where you get the uh, the or, or on Instagram where it's verification that you are who you say you are. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But before this, you had to get it by showing that you were uh, you were in the news, so you had to provide to them some news story showing that you were a public figure, and then they'd give you this uh, this blue check mark verification. Uh, but good old Elon Musk, uh, he decided he's going to turn everything on its end. And he said, OK, we're going to pay for it for Twitter. And, yeah, that's crazy. Uh, and so now you can buy this check mark to show that you are, quotes, verified. Uh, and good old, <laughs> I am being accused of not being the real <laughs> Bill Strand. Yeah, is, this, is this even Bill Strand? Right oh. on with you, Mizzou. <laughs> what? Why? Why? Why would people think that? This is not... Oh, okay. Wait a minute. I get it. He's listening. Okay. Verification. I was wondering what I was being accused of here, but, uh, but now Zuckerberg, uh, Meta, and Instagram are wanting to uh, add that to where now you can buy verification with Facebook and Instagram, and apparently you're going to be getting. Uh, a little bit of customer service. You actually can talk to somebody. Yeah. You, uh, your identity. They will, I guess, aggressively go after people trying to copy you. Copy you, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you have to have your legal, full legal name as it shows on a government document in your bio. So I'd have to have William Strand. I guess I can't use Bill Strand. <laughs> and yeah. you're not allowed to change your profile picture once uh once it is uh once it's set so they just lock you in and uh there, there's been some fun stuff where people have reported that uh facebook or instagram has replaced their profile picture with their government id which, oh, wow that's crazy i think yeah. i hear about that yeah i heard about that there one a yeah. couple of uh there a small amount of people were panicking because something happened, something messed up. And so these, these accounts with hundred thousand followers uh, now had their driver's license uh, placed oh, as a profile cool. picture. Uh, yeah. And because you're in a verification program, you can't change your profile picture. I heard, I heard about that. Yeah, exactly. So once you pick it, that's it. And that's like, I don't know about that. There's also the thing where I heard you can't even, if you're a business, you can't even be on it now. I, I, th <coughs> I think that you can, if your your name is in your bio, oh, okay, okay, uh, okay. But the, I I can't imagine that they wouldn't uh, they do, they wouldn't have a way that businesses can do this because now there's more and more businesses on Instagram and they're not doing this because of a verification. Uh, right. They're doing this to make money. Right, and right, right, right. So I, I can't imagine they won't find a way for everybody and their brother to be able to uh, pay them. Fifteen dollars, uh, which which ends up being what ten dollars to them because Apple yeah. takes five. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a lot, but I heard I heard if you go through Instagram, you can actually get it cheaper. So fun. No, fun, if fun you fact. go through your uh, your PC, laptop, right? your yeah. laptop. Yeah, yeah, that's what I heard. Something like that. Yeah, directly and not through not through thing. Yeah. 
Yeah, if you do but it on the if phone. You guys want to get verified? <laughs> yeah, I feel so. like I feel like that's the one thing I'm missing because I'm Father Blue. I just need the blue check to you know to go. <laughs> that's <my> right. <laughs> oh, look at that! Hello, Christopher. What's going on, Good dude. Man. So, all right. So, so you're going to try to get verified? No, I don't think so. I mean, unless it's like provides anything useful for my business, I don't really need it. Like, I was super excited when they were saying that, like. The verification process was going to push like reach, you know, yeah. it's going to help you get more people, more views. And I was like, okay, maybe I can, I'll invest in it for that. But like, from what I understand, it's not even doing that. It's more well, so they, like. They had to take it away. They had to take that off because everybody was, there was so much of a stink of people complaining about it saying, right. yeah, but you, you're not, you're not even allowing everybody to get verified because right, right, right. of all these conditions, even if they wanted to pay you. And so, right, right, right. They took that off of the feature list, but I, I got to tell you, Eddie, I don't believe it's uh, they are going to want to make sure the people who are giving them money are successful. And right. so I am I'm going to go out on a limb because I'm just this little reptile entrepreneur guy. Nobody tells me anything. But you know what? I'm going to tell you, I truly believe that you will be able to get better reach if you are paying them money. I can, I can, I can, I've done, I've paid for Instagram ads and I see the difference in what that does for you when you pay that versus the views you do, you get not paying for that. So I can only imagine if you're paying that monthly, sure, they're going to help. I just want to make sure that like, there's enough like test data done already from other people utilizing it before I jump on that bandwagon, yeah. you know, that, that's all it is. I don't want to give another service $15. I'm already paying so much in all these other services just to live normal life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know. Well, if you look at Twitter, uh, Elon's saying, all right, if anybody who is verified, they get into the main feed. And if you're not verified, you don't. Oh, and wow. That's crazy. So I, 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 know that. I can't imagine that Zuckerberg is not going to jump on that bandwagon. Right, right. It would only make sense. And, you know, honestly, it's actually a good idea. When we start paying the social media companies to be on their platform, then we're no longer the product. We are now the customers. Right, 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 right. So there's a subtle distinction there that may be significant in how we are treated, how our data is treated. You know, That's a good point. That's a good point. I never thought about that point. Yeah, you're right about that. Yeah, maybe they're not going to be, they're going to be more careful there's not going to be as much talk as like you hear with the the stuff with tiktok where they're trying to like ban it because those guys are taking our data and doing all this crazy stuff with yeah. it so I, I i can see that i can see that aspect of the yeah. now. now right now facebook is uh it already is making a bunch of money with our data so i don't think they're going to give that up but yeah. at the very least maybe they'll care about talking to us before they kill an account yeah uh, yeah maybe yeah, that, that's a scary thing to hear, man. Like, I was listening to the the interview you did the other day with, um, I forget his, the gentleman's name, but he does uh, Mighty Morphin, the reptile. The, Ryan. And Ryan, and he was talking about how he had this big account and it got taken away from him. And he oh, just yeah. gave up. He gave up. And I was like, I can only imagine I put in all this work into the Father Blue page or the Rep the the, 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 the Bioactive Works page. And it gets taken down and I can't get it back. Oh my goodness, man. That'd be and, crazy. And they, they, it's not even a real person sometimes that's doing it. It's just an artificial yeah. algorithm. It just says, okay, it's got this many complaints by people who could be just trying to take you down. Don't know how they don't have legitimate complaints and they take you down. So, I mean, we saw that earlier this year. I don't know if you followed, but a lot of the like the bite ball python arguments and they took down a couple pages you know like over overnight from all mm -hmm. the activists they were like hey I, I don't support you and then boom i'm like so it's super easy for if a community wants to come and take you down they yes. they can you know and that's a scary thing yeah i've seen that's it kind of so often it's so common to to the point where you're really playing a gambling game if you rely on instagram or facebook yeah, 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 yeah. And now TikTok, who knows what could happen there? Yeah. Like all of it, it's so you got to be really, really careful. I, that's why the, the theme of this year is uh, websites, podcasts, and uh, email lists, because those are the only three things that you can count on. As yours, is, yeah. Yeah, I agree. But um, the other good thing about 
uh, only pushing people that pay is that will cut down on so much of the bot and fake oh, accounts. Yeah, graphics. yeah, yeah. I mean, I I had a, a reel go viral to 25 million uh, views, and I got a lot of followers off of that. But that was just garbage. There were so many bots, so many uh, accounts that had no posts. They just follow 10,000 people and no posts. And, you know, those are just the, the fake accounts. And so, uh, yeah, I just, it would be so great if we could just wipe those things off, uh, off the platforms. And this might do it. Yeah, you know, it's funny you say that. I noticed that I recently have, I have a, a video now that's getting traction. It just hit 70K views. Yeah. And I've gained so many followers. Like since that video has been blown up, I've gained like a thousand followers. And I've noticed there's no engagement from those people. They're like, just like I'm getting the same amount of engagement, like I'm getting more likes on my page, but no one's like, Hey, what's going on? What's how's this? And this and that, like, there's no community building. It's just like people liking a post and saying, and then continuing to like the post and nothing more from that. And I'm like, is it even worth it to get 40,000 likes or 50,000 followers or whatever it is? Because, like, how do you build a community from what looks like, to me, at least bots? Yeah, well, Eddie, it it really depends on what your, uh, your purpose and your mission is. And it is so hard. I keep telling myself this all the time. I mean, I got to listen to my own podcast to remind me that sometimes getting – a whole big follow list is doesn't suit your purpose or your mission or your right, purpose right. or your promise. That's, you know, purpose is what it means to you and why you are doing this. And the promise is what you're doing for your community, what they right. can expect from you. And uh, we, it's just so easy to get caught up in the race to get those, that, that subscriber follower number up, 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 up. Yep, that yep, we forget yep. to do what we're, we're here to do. You're right. You're 100 percent right about that, man. It's right. It's hard to remind yourself that time all the time when you see everybody else with these thousands of followers, and you want to get into that same realm so you can whatever get whatever market it is that they have. But it's yeah, it's it's a hard race. It's really yeah. There's a lot the thing more is, to it. We got to keep that in mind, but also we got to keep into in mind that how many followers we have is how we're judged, and so we have to remember that it also. Even if it's a vanity metric, it opens doors for us. And I mean, if you've got a large account, people respect, oh, wow, you've got uh, 50,000 followers. Wow, you must be great. And all of a sudden they, they see you in a different light. And right. so even if they're all bot traffic, you now get the benefit of being seen as uh, it, what, I don't know, expert, uh, you know what you're doing and stuff. Yeah, so, yeah. So it's like we can't ignore it and just say, ah, vanity metric. We're not going to worry about it. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, the way the way I deal with that is, okay, I'm going to put 10% of my effort towards growth, discovery, and doing these crazy little real things. Yeah. But then the rest is going to be taking care of the community. Yeah. Which is what I'm, I'm on the, like I'm on that path right now to do the same thing of building that community with like, you know, I'm, I'm building the traction, which is good. And I'm getting these, you know, fans, like how you guys describe these super fans, these people that always want to ask questions, always talking to you. When you post something, they're commenting, they're replying, they're sharing, you're sharing your stuff. Those guys are cool. That's something I didn't have a lot of before. And so building this like little community of people that I'm able to help and share. And I'm like, even, even like I'm building these like little micro communities where like someone comes up to me and I'm like, hey, where do I get, let's say for example, Blue Tree Monitor. And I source them to someone who has a Blue Tree Monitor in their country. For example, I've helped two people now in, in, uh, in uh, Sweden get tree monitors from a friend in Germany that I have. Uh -huh. And they, they love me so much that they started their own pages and are talking about blue tree monitor care and everything like that and, and showing their progress and telling their friends like, hey, check out this. It, it's cool, like the evolution mm -hmm. of like, you start something, you build it, you see people kind of do the same thing and it's like, and everyone's sharing that same kind of passion and love. It's, it's a cool thing to be a part of, man, honestly. It's really yeah. fun. And, and that's the absolute right attitude. I mean, some people think, a leader is made because of how many followers they have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. the truth is, the true leader is the one who creates leaders. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good point. That's a good way to point that. So, that that's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Hey. 
Yeah, you got, you got somebody who agrees with you, Eddie. Look at that. <laughs> oh, yeah, Brad. Brad is sick, dude. Oh, that's what it's up. Hell yeah, Brad. Hell yeah. Brad's a cool dude. He's a, I know him through the tree monitor pages. He builds really cool enclosures and everything like that. Not just for tree monitors, but for Ackies, for even even uh, water monitors right now. Like He's a really cool dude. But he's one of those dudes where, like, there's no ego involved. He likes to build beautiful cages. He likes tree monitors. I love what he does. He likes what I do. And we share each other's stuff and we build community and friends and everything like that off of that. And like, that's what I want to see more of, more of this growth because the more people we get like Brad or the dudes in Sweden or the new person seeing me build my, you know, with the tree monitors and ask me where to get them and they get their own. That's more people we can talk about this stuff with, yeah. you know, and th that's fun, dude. Like, I want to talk with people about Blue Tree Monitors. I don't want to be the only one talking about them, you know, like. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, let's let's go into your your content creation, because you look at your Instagram account and you've come kind of come out of the uh, the gate uh, punching there with, uh, <laughs> with your cinematography. I mean, that is you, you're you're. Uh, you're doing videos uh, above, a little bit above what uh, a beginners usually start with. Definitely above what I've started with and yeah. above what I'm doing now. Yeah. Uh, what, what's your uh, content creation uh, approach and how are you uh, so good at your cinematography? Uh, well, funny enough, man, I, ha I had a stint in video making and, and cinematography and everything uh, like that. So, so I, I came from a small background with that. Uh, I, I've been in like my own documentaries. I had a documentary made of me and everything like that, or me and my friends from stuff like that. And that's, I've had my own expensive cameras and everything like that. So I know the basics of what good filming is, a good story, an idea, how to create that. Um, and I, I like to share a little bit of my personality. So what I usually do is if I find like a cool song that I really like, I try to build my video around that cool song that I like, whatever it is, whether it's a, a trending song or a song I listen to, whatever. And I film everything just like the greatest filmers out there. If you, the, the, the worst shot you have is the shot you don't get, you know? So if you, if you film everything, well, then you have content to make whatever you want, you know? So, so I have, I, I know, I know what I want to see. I know what people like to see. I know what I want to share. And I use basic stuff, man. I use a basic iPhone. As you can see, like this, this case right here is built. I don't know if you can see it, but this case is a, is a camera case that's meant to plug up oh, yeah. on a tripod and everything like that. I can put a mic on there, everything I need. So like simple stuff like that, I make it ready so that if I ever need a film or anything like that, I'm ready at the hip. Um, and yeah, I just, I just have this like, creative eye and brain for like making stuff that I like that I think is cool. And I share it. the, the viewers kind of prove that it's cool. Cause they like it and share it as well, you know? So, so yeah, every, I, basically I film everything. Uh, I, I luckily I have the programs to, to edit everything, like all the Adobe programs, uh, like, like, you know, so I know how to work those programs as well. So yeah, it's, it's just comes like from nature, unfortunately, well, fortunately, because I've just been involved with that for a little bit, you know? All right. So, well, if you're comfortable with video, like you obviously are, the uh, world is essentially your oyster and you can go to any platform because they all want video. So yeah. you're, you're, you're in demand, Eddie. Uh, <laughs> what, <laughs> so what, what went into your decision as to which social media platforms you're going to concentrate on? Uh, so that's, I'm going to concentrate on all of them. Like, but my biggest one that I want to uh, focus is YouTube, to be quite honest. Like I want to okay. really work into YouTube, um, but be very broad with all the platforms. So the way I figured, like I have an entire like this, like kind of business plan or, 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 or content plan that I've created for the year, which involves growing as much as I can for the Instagram platform, right? And I know, knowing that that's not like a permanent space, but it's a space to grow, to get started because it has the most traction. Um, and to build that platform as much as I can, to build the community, the reason to put the resources I have and everything like that available that I can provide. Uh, and then to migrate those followers and the super fans the people that are really interested in the content I make onto the different platforms like YouTube, like, like the podcasting networks. I haven't figured out which one I want to go yet uh, with that, with that. Well, but um, oh, I've got an even, opinion now <laughs> and even, and even my personal uh, website and everything like that. So everything is based off of the Instagram to then migrate to the other platforms, but YouTube being the one that I really want to focus on because I figured it was like, it has the biggest growth potential, you know, for the most part, in my opinion. Okay. So 
uh, I guess, why would you, let's go into why you would want to build a, a big community on Instagram. And then why would you want to take them to YouTube? Because Instagram is for like short form content. At the end of the day, it's like it's made for the person that wants to scroll and watch a 10 second video and leave. Similar to TikTok. And I'm a guy with a lot to say, dude. Like <laughs> I, got, I, want, I want to tell you the ins and outs of tree monitors. I want to tell you my life of why I do this. Me, What's it like living in New York City if you want to do this sort of stuff? What's it like the challenges I face with this? My my soon to be trip to Indonesia and documenting that stuff. Like, Wait like, a minute. Yeah, yeah, you got yeah. that in the works. That's in the works, man. September, dude. I'm going to Indonesia you three weeks. I'm going, wow. to I'm going to Bata I'm going to Indonesia to, to to the city of Indonesia for one week, just checking around the, the area, and then I'm going to be in Batanta two weeks over there, actually documenting tree monitors, recording them, and the goal of that trip is to actually. I'm going in the midst of the breeding. So the breeding season commences in August, from what I'm told by the people that I'm talking to. And then September onwards is when they're laying eggs. And my 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 plan is to verify how these animals are laying eggs. Are they laying eggs in tree stumps? Are they laying eggs in the ground? Are they laying eggs in the termite mounds? Like I predict, I'm going out there and I'm going to research that. But two weeks right now to trips, uh, it's all, everything's worked out. Everything's ironed out. It's happening. So, wow. so yeah, man, we're making it happen, dude. Yeah. So awesome. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. But I want to. I want to document this stuff, and you can't do this stuff on Instagram. It's hard. I mean, I can share a 10 second, 30 second snippet, but nobody wants to look at a 30 minute video on Instagram. And a YouTube is the place for that. You know, in my opinion, at least. Okay. All right. Now you. And Brad, yeah, Batanta, bro. I'm going to Batanta, Brad. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> Uh, now you talked about a podcast and have you decided uh, and with podcasts what's going on right now you've got these video podcasts that go on to youtube uh, and then you've got this uh audio podcast which is a traditional podcast and now you've got these hybrid podcasts which is for youtube podcast and spotify to where you can upload a video but then it will also be able to be listened to on the music app. So it's like it's video designed for the audio experience. Uh, have you given thought to which, where your new podcast would fall into that? I want to do the video style podcast because I figure for me at least, you know, with this, in this day and age, everybody wants to be stimulated in some way, right? And it's very hard for someone. Maybe you get the the active driver that's going into work that can listen to a podcast. Someone mopping around their house, listen to the podcast. But for most part, people want to be engaged and like look at something, you know. And I figure I can do a better job at making uh, an interview style podcast with a lot of data on it because I want my podcast to be data based, and maybe I can help with stimulating the people with what they want to see and want to hear at the same time, you know? So, but making it in a way that you can put it on the audio podcast and still get what you want out of it, you know? All right. Well, it sounds like, sounds like what YouTube and Spotify are doing are right up your alley. Because <laughs> yeah, uh, right? they will automatically put your video onto their audio platforms. Okay. Uh, so that, really, that, I didn't. Whoa, I, I had no. So you can like a regular video. Is this with the podcasting that YouTube just posted out, or is it just yes. with general, all YouTube videos? All right. So this is this is where things stand right now. So Spotify has this all taken care of. They've got a, a platform to where you can load up a video uh, interview, and people can either watch the video interview or they can just take Spotify with them and listen to. The video interview oh that's cool now youtube is trying to compete with them and so they came up with this youtube podcast thing to where right, it, right, it's, right. it's now a playlist so if you whatever you load up as a part of your podcast playlist they will at least in the future they will let it uh, they will uh, broadcast it over their youtube music app yeah uh, yeah, yeah. so it looks like i mean the youtube podcast is looks like exactly what you're looking for Sounds like it. It's going to have everything in one ecosystem, which I think is yeah. better, but I'm not going to just stay in one place because same thing with Instagram, man. You don't want to put all your eggs in one basket and then YouTube go put ourselves to Facebook and then or whatever it is. And then your 
out of your content, you know, and you're, I don't want to be put in a position like that, you know? So, so on top of all this stuff, one thing that I got from a friend and it's already in the works, it's already being developed and everything like that is to build a website platform to host all this stuff, you know, pretty much like a place, not host it, but like direct, like, Hey, here's like a snippet of what I'm doing. If you want more in depth information, on what's going on, you can uh, you can check it out here, and then that will plug you out to these different sources out there that you can see, whether it's the podcast, whether it's the Instagram, whether it's the photo, whatever it is, and everything like that. You know, just have more control of my have more control of this, my content so that I can have it for the future. You know, because I really want to document all this stuff and keep it keep this like you know in the in the archives for future you know stuff that I want to do. Okay, well, let's talk about the uh, the basic struggle that someone like you is going through in making a decision between uh, whether you're going to be primarily business-based or primarily the educational outreach. And uh, I'll just give the background for everybody listening. Uh, we, many of us in the reptile community, we, want, we, we love the reptiles and so we wanna create an educational outreach so people can learn about the reptiles. But we're also in it so deeply that we want to make products to help our people do better. I mean, I, I do chameleons. I love, have the Chameleon Academy. That's an educational outreach. And then I have Dragon Strand, which is a chameleon caging company, uh, because I want to create cages that are great for chameleons. And so the question comes down to how intimately do you tie those two together and do you keep them totally separate? And yeah. so, uh, Eddie, if you, uh, how much thought have you given to that? And what have you, uh, where, where are you in that thought process? Yeah, I mean, similar to how you said, it's such a dilemma because on one hand, I want to create this beautiful educational resource for the people that want to come here and learn about tree monitors, right? And I want to build it in a way that's authentic and not like force feeding stuff that I design and I use on a daily to these guys. I want them to be able to, you know, pick whatever they want to use for their challenges they're going to face with keeping these animals in particularly blue tree monitors uh, and on the other hand i want to be a successful entrepreneur and create a business or, or grow my business into a way that is prosperous and continues to grow at the speed that it's growing now so it's a very like double-edged sort of like what's right what's wrong what i want to do for the most part i want to do both and i want to separate them as much as i can is what i'm is what i'm planning to do uh and with that being said like I have a different kind of thing because I, I have I have, there's three versions of what I'm doing right there's the business there's bioactive works which is my 3D printed program that I do for the, the the stuff that I'm making there's the persona that I have online Eddie Guerra or, or Father Blue the the Instagram where everyone sees what I'm doing every day with the tree monitors and then there's the educational resource background that I want to do that's completely separated from me and more so about the animals right and I want to do all three and I think ultimately i think that's going to be better because it's going to be it's going to put me in a position from what i feel that if let's say my business gets too big or my persona father blue gets too big and i can't focus on the blue tree monitor educational resource well it's its own entity that i can pass it on to the next person yeah. that wants to take that over you know and it's something that they can continue to grow and develop and help spread the message of the care and love for blue tree monitors so i'm thinking of it more in that perspective that it might be more beneficial for the community if it's built in a resource platform that's open that way and not directly related to me and what i'm doing so that's kind of the channel the channel i want to do because i just want to spread the message that blue tree monitors are cool that they need a lot of help in the wild and hopefully we can get them to you know, successful as ever. Yo, what's up, dude? Look at that dude. Oh, man. I got I to gotta share. <laughs> there she is. She's a, she's a Shiba Inu, so uh, yeah, yeah. traditionally, oh, why are you picking me up? <laughs> why you me? So, yeah. That's cool. Mm, yeah. She, I just had to have her say hello to everybody. <laughs> so, and... and Obviously, I've gone through the exact same thing, and I've decided to keep my Chameleon Academy separate from my Dragon Strand Chameleon Caging Company. Uh, I'll I'll talk about Dragon Strand. I'll talk about the cages. I'll use them in uh, use them in examples. Like I said, I don't ignore that I exist, 
outside right. of this, but but also I, I don't push it. In fact, some people are surprised to find that I have another company. But um, it, it if I ever stop doing Dragon Strand, I want to continue be able to continue doing Chameleon Academy. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, and, and uh, you know you can always you can always rebrand, uh, but. Yeah, it, there, there's decisions that have to be made. There's limitations. If I called it the Dragon Strand podcast, yeah, there'd be people that wouldn't feel comfortable coming on because it's a retail thing. And yep, 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 exactly, exactly. And, and it, and then I wouldn't be able to talk about other products. And and I, and I said this all in the podcast, so some people are probably saying, "Ah, Bill, I've heard this from you before." But uh, <laughs> yeah, on ChameleonAcademy.com, my first product that I reviewed, I did a complete build guide, which was the Nexoterra product, which is yeah. a Nexoterra cage. And so, by having it separated, I have the ability to do that. And if anybody's wondering which way you should go, the question is: uh, Are you a community member first, or are you a business first? Right, right. Uh, and no right answer. It's the, you. There's it, one is not better than the other. You just got to decide what you are. And if you would, if you're gonna just drop the entire thing it, once you sell your business, or or whatnot, then call it your business name and get the full marketing benefit of your effort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. And I think there's times to do that for everything. You know, like because I'm doing so many different things, I can break into those different aspects and however I want. Whether I want to build, whether I want to do something about blue and you know doing blue tree monitors and having podcasts that hour, maybe even want to talk to the guy that wants a three D print for his animals that aren't particularly tree monitors but different animals. Want to have a platform from that? So there's there's different branches by keeping it separated, you know, which yeah. which could be cool. It's amazing what kind of uh, freedom that gives you, right? Uh, and so I, you know, obviously we've all got to make our own decisions, but. I would agree with uh, where you're going with this. Oh, uh, oh, well, let's talk about where are you going? You mentioned uh, doing a YouTube, getting more involved with the YouTube, but uh, where are you going as far as your outreach and and with your business, BioWorks? But Bioactive Works is growing, which is beautiful. It's like I've, I have my product in, in in so many places over the world, all over the world. Um, I'm in contact with so many different people, so many different content creators to have my products, reviewing them, making content for me, pro pushing them out, promoting it, um, me coming out with different products that people are testing out to make sure they're good for the masses or for the public market. Like it's doing really great, and it, it's doing to the point where I didn't expect it to grow this quickly and this nice um it's both fun and scary at the same time because i have all these worries in my head about is my product good is it going to be you know what the masses want is someone going to copy it etc cetera, etc cetera. so yeah. there's all these worries that go on in my mind but so far the community really likes it you know and that's the coolest thing the fact that i can make something design it by myself like i have one of here the fact that i can make something like this and design it on my own and 3d print it out and, and people like this and utilize it that's sick. I even have zoos reaching out telling me, hey, I want some of your products. Would you mind, you know, donating or whatever? And unfortunately, I'm at the point where I like can completely donate to people for free yet, you know. But the fact that I have that type of, you know, notice is crazy. It's cool, man. Honestly, yeah. it, it really is, you know. And so uh, with your the products that you've made, I mean, you, you've done some incredible things uh, already. Uh, do you have a whole list of things you want to do? Or, Net, or like like pro like what do you what do you mean yeah, like product you want to make? In, are you going to make a a wider uh product offering or are you going to be refining the products that you already have no no i got i got a lot of products that i want to make like these are just like the the the, the first goals of them just to see like how are the animals reacting to these to these products right this is the first goal like do they work for more than just tree monitors do they do other animals use them right i have people right now that dark frogs are using micro versions of these right and i have pictures of dark frogs in them i have a picture of people using these for uh, uh dwarf reticulated pythons they're sleeping inside of these i have monitors i have frogs i have like all these different animals geckos everything like that utilizing these things so i'm like all right cool the basic concept would they use something like this they will use it so how can we refine something like this can we make different products similar to this that maybe hang up from the ceiling 
Maybe it can be submerged halfway in the substrate. Maybe it can be both a hide and also help them with getting food and water. Like there's so many products. There's a product, there's products that are developed. Oh my God, I can't talk about it yet because it's no, not no. released. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, got, totally. I got products that I swear to God, there's nothing like these products. And once they're released, they're gonna change the game. But I'm like actively waiting to build a more of a following online to release them because where I, where I see a lot of this stuff, right? Like the reason why I'm so slow is because I don't have the biggest people watching me or the biggest like 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 uh, fan base, right? And so I figure if I release something like this and not enough people see that, the wrong person can see this, copy it, and then release it to their masses, and then I lose out on everything that I have worked hard on. So I'm trying to develop my fan base, my client base, my name in this space, so that when I release something. People are really automatically going to be like, that's Eddie. Eddie made that. Those are Eddie's products. No one else makes that. You know, similar to how David Braum, when you see a perch, you're like, David Braum, that he did that. Everyone else doing it. He did it first, though, you know, type of deal. That's how I want to move in this space safely, at least, you know. All right. Now, that that uh, uh, 3D printed piece you have there, that is um, incredibly complex. <laughs> yeah, is that done on one machine? At, one machine, one yeah, app? yeah. At this point, I can get it on one machine. Yeah, yeah. One machine in total will print the entire thing. Yeah. How long does it take to do one? Uh, depends uh, how good of a quality I want. Like something like this, about I would say twenty hours of printing, right? Wow. But that's because I want this detail. If I don't want this fine of a detail, I can do it in maybe like ten hours. If I want even finer detail, I can go up to two days of printing, but and it would just bring the resolution down or make it a little bit more finer. You can't see too much of it, but you can kind of see some of the layer lines and everything. Like it's hard because of my camera, but you can see some of the layers. You see how they're like stepped on and everything like that, like stepped almost like. Let me see. Yeah, but I notice a whole lot more smooth surfaces, which isn't typical for three D printing. So right, is that because you've upped the resolution? No, well, no, my, my printers are like not off the shelf printers. You can't buy them. Like all my printers are like custom built by me, custom programmed by me. Like, yeah, like they're not, they're like, everything's like now my printers are like Wi-Fi controlled. I can monitor them off my phones. Like they're very like the, again, you can't buy these printers off the shelf. They're all custom built, but I've been working in three space since I would say like I have like 10, 12 years now in 3D printing. Before you could even buy a 3D printer from the store, I was building them, you know, when they were first released, the data to, to like the RepRap projects of how to make them at home. You know, when the when the original patents were up and we could build them was when I was working with this stuff, you know. So I was and you know, I've learned all everything there is about 3D printing, how to print successfully, how to do this type of stuff without support, like there's a lot of stuff that I've, that I've learned from this stuff. So it's, it's, can someone else do it? Sure. But I just, I'm just way ahead of a lot of other people, you know? Yeah. It, it What you've got there, that, that seems like that would be a whole lot of effort to put into uh, recreating that. But of course, yeah, people for sure. will do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that's why I went this route and not something super easy because it's not easy to replicate. Like it looks, it looks like a basic shape, but if you try to get this organic shape here, you're good luck. You're gonna be there for a long time. I promise you. You're gonna be there for a long time. <laughs> so, well, all right. Let, let's attack that head on. How do you deal with uh, the people copying you in a 3D space? Oh, man, man, everybody's got a 3D printer. I yeah, yeah. I wish I could just hit the block button and, and like remove all my problems with that stuff. But you know, and, and it's funny. I had a conversation today about this exact same thing. And ultimately, man, there's nothing you can do. The only thing you can do is like just innovate better, make better products, be better, a better person at how you market stuff, um, and, and hit the ground running, man. The same way, you know everyone's gonna unfortunately like the world is not there's so few innovators in this world there's so many like followers versus leaders and so 
when someone sees a problem, instead of trying to create a solution, they rather find the easiest way to mimic that, that someone else done. They're like, take their work. I've had it happen to me. I've had someone copy a couple of my products and that's fine. What can I do when I try to combat it? Most of the people will say, most of the people will say, uh, oh, it's a free market. We can do what you want, you know? And I'm like, and so how do you fight that? You know, you can't. And once a, once someone steals a design, it's not like I can go to their house and be like, hey, dude, stop making it. As soon as I leave, it's going to make it again, right? So, like, so there's not a lot you can do. But like I said, if you continue to push and you build a name for yourself and you develop a, a kind of, like, product, then you have something. Like, at this point, I never would have thought of this, but I, I see a lot of the stuff I make is, like, artwork almost. And I'm developing my own, like, artistic my artistic form, you know, similar to like when you see a Picasso, you know who Picasso's work, what his work looks like, right? And, and everyone else. And so th these models and everything that I'm doing, even from this to the termite models and everything like that, and, I, and I'll show a couple of other stuff that I made. Like this is stuff that's never been, that I've never seen people do before. And I'm in this space creating this stuff and I'm gonna continue to make a whole bunch of stuff, but I'm gonna do it so hard so heavy, so nice looking, so well made and thought out that people who want to copy me, it's going to be like looking at my product that's like a top tier product and looking at a dollar store product. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how that's how well you're going to be able to tell the difference in what I'm doing and they're doing. And if they if they copy, good for them. It's It shows that if you get someone that copies you, it shows that you have such a great idea, it's worth copying, you know. And so take it as a take it as a compliment at that point, you know. Yeah, because you don't have a choice to do anything else. Yeah, exactly, right? Exactly. Hey, all right. MNG is here. Hello. <laughs> all right. Well, oh, by the way, anybody in the uh, the audience there, if you have questions, please put them down because uh, and, and we'll we'll answer them. If you got comments, put them in, and uh, we'll talk about it. Because yeah, three D printing, vivid yeah. skills. I'm working on that, dude. I promise. Dude, yeah. man. I could show you. I'm just gonna tell you the stuff I'm working on is plugged. It's almost like Legos, where you plug it and you can build this out. Any oh, just wait, dude. Just wait, dude. I, <laughs> hey, I've already. I've always got season four of the podcast, and uh, you know, you, you you've got a slot on there. To yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's. Uh, I'll, I'll throw a nice open-ended question out. Uh, you have. Let's start with, you have now created a successful e-commerce business. You've got a website. You've got a Shopify website that accepts orders. You get paid. You ship them out. What was the biggest roadblock to you getting to this point? What was the biggest challenge to get over? Um like it, 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 any aspect of the business right yeah anything to get you to this point what was the biggest challenge and, and the context is we've got people who are thinking to start businesses or saying yeah i want to start a business and so just what kind of thing did you run into that you had to get over that they are going to run into keeping up with demand i was not expecting how well my products were going to be received and there were moments where people were ordering I, I like for example i i got like you know i got like 30 holders in one week right mm -hmm. and i had at one point i only had i was living in, a, in my small apartment before i got this place small apartment and i could only fit two printers working at any one time and to fit it takes one hour to print one of these holders and so i had to sit there and match six you know two printers 60 of these that's a lot of time back and forth, uh, you know, and then on top of that, the other orders like hides on top of that and 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 and, uh, and plant pots on top of that. Like I was so backed up. It's so it was like a, a ditch that was so deep that I had to dig out myself out of to fulfill those orders. Um, and so I learned how to like make it in a place where I got a little bit more like leg room to work on producing orders. Uh, 
upping my production. So now instead of having the two printers that I was working on before, I have eight printers that can go at any one moment and I can print eight of them at one time or I can have eight holders, eight hides going at one time. Like, so I'm, I'm, I'm more free in that space as well. Um, and also going into different production methods where I don't need 3D printers anymore so that I can like rely on other aspects of, of manufacturing to create these orders. So that was the biggest thing. Um, I know you said one. My second thing was like Give being afraid. Yeah. My second thing was being afraid to ship overseas because I had so much interest for people overseas that wanted my product and I didn't know how to get it to them uh, at the time. And I was so afraid to ship out because I thought I was going to lose it. Uh, and, and just researching uh, USPS does it. And I had no idea. I didn't know that that was something that was available. I thought I had to go through like DHL or something like that. And, and so to find that resource available and now, now I've shipped to Japan, to Germany, Spain, mm -hmm. France, uh, Africa, Australia. I've shipped to uh, Hawaii. I've shipped Alaska. Like, I've been all, my stuff is all over the place now, you know. And that, that's really cool to know that I have this like freedom to do all this other stuff like that, you know. Um, the country I'm shipping to, Germany, Germany and like Sweden, is where I'm shipping to a lot more. Those dudes, there's a ton of tree monitor guys out there that really love. These rings, my hides, Germany has a lot of that, man. That that's it's, that was unsuspecting, but that that but and next is Sweden. Sweden and Germany, both of them are the, the countries for sure. But um, but yeah, so to going over those hurdles and then lastly, taxes, man. Make sure you get your taxes <laughs> in place. Cause if you don't, they're gonna bang you over the head, I promise you. So make sure you're on top of that stuff, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. All right, so where you are right now, and you can choose to answer this however way possible. We don't want to get into uh, sensitive information as to your future plans, but is there something right now that you are trying to work yourself through? Yeah, yeah. The, it's the um, so I, I, I don't know if you fall followed what I've been doing on, on the Instagram, but the uh, Arboreal Nespin, right? And so I made a working prototype. I have a prototype that's completely works. It, it heats up, it keeps the substrate where it needs to be. It it, it, it's, it it does everything that I could imagine that I've always wanted it to do, right? It's the perfect product for me. It does that. My problem right now, my hurdle that I'm having is that I wanna sell this product to the masses Right, but because it's an electrical equipped item, oh, yeah. I'm so afraid of what happens if this thing catches on fire. Can it catch on fire? What are the implications of me being the provider of this product if people aren't using it in the method they're trying they have to use it? That's my biggest yeah, hurdle right now. It's tough. figuring out, yeah, it's, it's to figure out how do I provide this product safely to the masses? Like it works. I know it's safe. I know it works for me. Mine's ther thermistically controlled. Everything is fine, right? But what happens to the guy that like puts it in their cage and there's like a power surge and it's fried and now it's unsafe and how, what happens then, right? Because these, uh, these items aren't really tested for that sort of thing or that outcome. And so there's more testing to be done with it. But it's just how do I bring this thing to people without having that liability on? Because I want everyone to have it. And people are so excited to have it, but I don't want to give them a product that could be potentially dangerous. So that's what uh, I'm facing right now. Oh yeah, that's a that's a uh, that is definitely a common problem. I mean, can you? <laughs> is this something where you can make it so you can somebody can buy your product and then they can buy a heat pad from some? Yeah, yeah, of course. I can do that. Don't know, don't, yeah, and we we do that all the time. We do that all the time. But I think it will take away from how my product works because the, the, what makes it so unique is that the technology that goes inside of it heats it uniformly around so uh, from yeah, top right. to bottom the entire thing is evenly heated whereas if you were to put a heat pad inside of it it's only heated in that one spot yeah, yeah. which is which is why i've needed to combat that issue you know that everyone's had so you have put heating elements throughout the entire, entire from top oh, to bottom. My goodness, from top to bottom, the entire thing is evenly heated at the bottom portion, the farthest portion to the middle, 
to the top end, it's the same temperature throughout. Wow. Which is which is what I've been aiming for because I'm trying to mimic how a termite mound would theoretically work in the wild, where it's an enclosed ecosystem that's evenly distributed in heat. And so I made this product to work in that same method. And again, I can make products that have all the same attributes containing the heat without the heat, no problem. But then it won't be what I've been working so yeah. hard for to make, you know, and I just want to do that safely. Yeah. So. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a big thing. You <laughs> if you know engineer that. or anything like that, shoot them my way, dude. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is where you need an LLC. <laughs> yeah, I have one, luckily, so okay. that's fine. Yeah, my, okay. my, my business is registered in an LLC, so it's fine. All right. So you got that, and then you just need a some place to uh, test your electrical circuits to give you a uh, the a passing rating. Yeah, I have one right now. I have one. That, I have one that's been tested. Uh, I, I have one tested right now. Uh, that's been going on for about a month straight with no issues or anything like that, insulated and everything. So it's fine. It's, it doesn't spike in temperature. It doesn't heat. The elements that I use are completely rated for this type of use and everything like that. So that's not a problem. Again, I, I think the biggest thing is more so like outside factors I can control, like people's housing, people's homes and how they're using it, you know? Like in my environment, because I have seven foot enclosures, maybe I have enough ventilation and where this thing can't overheat. But what's up with someone who has a cage smaller than mine, hotter than mine, or wetter than mine? Yeah. Well, how would that affect it? You know, these are all different things that I'm testing out to make sure that I can cross all those kind of variables out, you know? Or if they have a misting system. And yeah, but mine have that. Mine are misted as well, so that's not a problem. You know, they're waterproof and, and sealed for that sort of thing. And they have drains, so they drain up. They're drainable as well. So I looked at all that sort of stuff. Yeah. All right. On your Instagram, you just have this big, huge uh, thing that's like half the size of your body. Oh, uh, you know what I'm talking about? What's that? The Are you talking about the uh, the uh, which are you talking about now? The, it was just on your Instagram. You had this. It was a picture of you holding this huge. Uh, it looked like one of your egg laying. Uh, oh, let me go get that. Let me go get that. All right, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. guys, <laughs> let, let's go see this monstrosity he's created. <laughs> so he'll go get that. So this this guy is. Uh, it's amazing the things he's looking out. He's doing. All right, MLG says, "What is the rarest species of reptile in captivity?" Well. I know some species that aren't in captivity. <laughs> <laughs> They're Cites one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, I, I, would, I would have to say this has to be some type of frog or something like that. Honestly, I couldn't even think of anything that we can keep. I don't I have no idea. But what you were talking about, this is it right here. <laughs> oh, this is it right here. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. goodness. So, so this is uh, an artificial hollow log that I developed. And so if you look inside of it, it's completely hollow. You can go all the way through. You see? So it's a hollow log. Uh, Dude, how did you make that? Yeah, see? That's my hand right there. Yeah, so it's a hollow log. It's 3D printed. 3D printed, and then the outside is sculpted with rubber. Wait, well, okay. So explain to me, who is very interested in these things, how you 3D printed something that big and got rubber on it. What What is this thing? Yeah, so it's a, it's a 3D printed form, right? I have 3D printers large enough now that I can like 3D print these type of things in one piece. And so it's a 3D printed piece, one form piece, uh, and then uh, to get the form that I wanted. Uh, and I'm working with now a, a zoo grade rubber, safe for animals and everything like that, uh, that's fire retardant as well. So it's safe to use with heat and everything like that. Uh, and this is an insulated uh, false hollow log uh and it's in order to, to to prove a theory because one of the theories we have right now about how tree monitors are laying eggs is through termite mounds and the other one is potentially hollow logs so i wanted to debunk both theories or test out both theories and create one is the the heated egg dome and then one is a heated uh hollow log uh, and so the way that this will work would i wish i could do it. yeah the way this will work is that you will put this on the wall on a substrate, fill it with substrate, and then hopefully the animal will see it as a natural laying option. Go in here, dig, lay its eggs, and I can move it and do whatever I want with it and everything like that. 
But yeah, this is just another concept of what I was trying to do with the egg with the egg box with the with the termite mount, just made in a log version. And it still needs to be like artificially painted to look like a log because right now it just looks like a big brown thing. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's this is three D printed and then hand sculpted out of rubber. Out of uh, and yeah. so amazing. All right, so two questions: How big? How big of a thing? Can you 3D print? I mean, those are monster 3D printers to be able to do that. Yeah, I have two printers right now that can print uh, on a bed that's about, I would say, 24 inches, 24 inches square. And yeah, 24 by like 24 that I can print. Yes, yeah, so it's a pretty big square printer. I have two of them. Uh, so I'm able to like print the, these molds. And if something doesn't completely fit, you can chop it and glue it and then, you know, pop it up however you want, everything like that. But these are so as long as you angle it in the correct way, you can print it in one in one shot, you know? Dang. All right. That is impressive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. I mean, again, I've been working. The reason I got into 3D printing was to 3D print bikes originally. So, like, I, I've just been working with how to make these big and easy to use and all this stuff like that so that I can create these type of forms. And luckily, I have the resources now so I can do this sort of stuff because I've never seen anything like that done yet. And now we're doing it, you know. So, but yeah, this is the base model that's going to be uh, casted uh, to take a mold out of so that I can then make these out of you know uh, uh, uh pourable rubber and resins so that it's easier for other people to use if they want to use it and everything like that you know oh this is awesome i i love being able to watch you do what you're doing this is this has been a blast <laughs> so far and it's only going to get better yeah yeah every day every day i'm thinking of new stuff that i think is cool that i haven't seen been brought into the community yet and i'm just testing it out see what people think man you know because like we gotta think differently this stuff, technology advances every day. You look at like the, the aquarium hobby and all the cool stuff that they got going on. Why can't we have that for reptiles? That's how I feel, you know? So I'm here trying to fill in that niche. <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> all right, we're coming to the end of the hour. Uh, anything else you want to say to uh, the people who are here now and the people who are going to be watching this afterwards? Yeah, I mean, I, I can only hope that this stuff... Like seeing our talks, you know, the, the first ones we have all the way to the recent ones that it inspires someone to do something similar. You know, like I, I love what I'm doing. I love that I'm innovating. I love that I'm creating. But what I love more is talking to different people, new people. You know, like recently I just caught up with this kid that's in Spain who's developing microcontrollers to, to for, for like to to control the complete temperature parameters of cages, everything from like temp sensors, humidity sensors, everything in a cage that controls your phone, right? But directly, rated. he's making them, he's making the PCB boards mm. and programming it. And, and I'm like, this stuff is cool as hell, man. And I, I want to be able to nerd out with more people doing this sort of stuff as well for our animals because I just think it's cool to advance the hobby in that way. You know, we're the, we're the future of this hobby. And so I just hope that these, these talks that you're doing with the reptile entrepreneur, not only with me, but with all the entrepreneurs, inspire someone to come up and be like, hey, man, there's this problem. I don't have a solution. Let me make the solution. And hopefully I can inspire the next person to do the same. That's all I want, you know? So, yeah, if you're watching this, future you, whoever you are out there, please come to our hobby, make something cool, introduce yourself to us. I want to embrace the hell out of you because we want to see you grow. Just like break, Bill embraced me to help me grow into this. Like if it wasn't for you taking interest in what I had here, I don't think I'd be as far as I am here, you know? So I will, I will just only hope that the next person gets the same treatment, love and everything like that out of this, man. Cause it's, it's cool. It's really cool, man. Yeah, and we're so just, young in this. There's so much that we all can do in our respective communities yeah. i've put all of that brain power to uh figuring out solutions to the problems yeah. and and you know you, you don't the whole thing about oh i'm just going to copy something i'm going to have a business yeah okay well yeah you can do that but we really yeah. need people to solve problems yes 100 percent. that's what i agree that's what i agree with man we need to whatever it is you know whether it's like 
how to build simulate inside rain chambers for animals to make it easier to simulate breeding you know for certain species or how to like one project that i wish i could have the time to do is like how to simulate barometric pressure inside of an enclosure you know did you imagine if someone can create something to do that how crazy what kind of stuff we could see like oh man like that sort of stuff, man. I just want to see it simulating, you know, uh, artificial thunderstorms inside of here to see if we can get certain animals to like, ah, ah, there's so much stuff that I think about. So I'm like, please, wherever you are, come out here and help us make this. Like, you know? Yeah, and you're absolutely right. I mean, all these things are so exciting. We, we, we have gotten out of the stage where we just need to keep the animals alive. We've gotten out of the stage where we can breed animals to the point right, where we can right. commercially breed. Now right. we're in the stage of refining our art to uh, for longevity and to recreate the natural condition as like this is a, such an exciting stage of uh, of our progression of our evolution yeah, yeah. that na now's a great time to be part of the community and being part of the creating solutions i agree i agree so, all right well everybody we're going to say goodbye. Thank you very much for dropping by. Could you please hit the like button? You know, to say Bye, that you like this video. <laughs> uh, we're we're trying to uh, start up this. I'm, I'm trying to start up this uh, uh, this live uh, every week. I'd like to do it every week because it's just so great to have entrepreneurs and influencers and content creators and everybody here together. And this is a great place for us to uh, trade ideas and and be inspired. And so. Uh, help me, help me get the word out, hit the like on this video, share it with friends, tell friends this was a cool place to be on a Sunday evening and <laughs> we'll say goodbye. Thank you very much, Eddie. Thank you, and, Thank you, Brad. Uh, you know what? We got somebody appreciating. Brad, Podcast. thank you. Thank Big you, dog. Brad. <laughs> so, all right, everybody. See you later.